morning, everybody. Uh, before uh, we get started, I just wanted to say thank you to Pastor Van and to uh, Cedar Crest Church that uh, if I've got a chance to know you or even if, if I haven't actually had a chance to meet you yet, that uh, it's just really cool to see that Cedar Crest Church is gonna have an impact in Alaska because y'all uh, trusted a part-timer that was still at Kennesaw State to help out in student ministry in 2015. And, and uh, Mary and I both have just gotten so many opportunities and, and leadership here and to be developed and be encouraged by you guys. So, uh, so whether or not you knew it when you showed up to church today, you're having an impact in Alaska because of uh, you guys just showing up and, and being so encouraging to Mary and myself. And so uh, I've got one more sermon in me. So do y'all wanna finish up our DNA series this morning? So awesome, awesome. So we're gonna wrap up our series we've been in called DNA Designed for More. And what we're looking at is, is kind of wherever you're at in your relationship with Jesus this morning. If you uh, got drunk here with a friend and you're like, man, I didn't just, I didn't wanna be here. I heard there was free coffee and I'm just here right now. Or if you've been following Jesus for decades and this is just what, uh, what you do, um, that there's something that you have been designed to do and that there are things that are baked into our DNA being created by God to, to do certain things or to be able to experience certain things. And so through this series, we talked about how we're designed for hope and being able to, to hope in something because God is in the midst of everything that we're going through or, or how, we can, uh, how we're designed to have joy in the middle of circumstances in life that are maybe difficult or, or we don't know where we're headed or, or we're designed to serve and to be a part of what God is doing in the, the local church and, and serving the people around us. And today we're gonna talk about how we are designed to go or we are designed to go, that there is something baked into your DNA that you weren't designed to be stagnant or you weren't designed to be stuck or to be caught up in the middle of things that, that you, you don't know how to get out of or you don't know how to push through those things that God has designed you to go because he has something far greater for you than anything that you could plan on your own. And so I think about this this time when Mary and I first started dating and she would house sit for a couple that we knew and they had this little dog named Riley. And Riley was, I don't even know what kind of breed of dog Riley is. She's like, this, like one of those little uh, white dogs with kind of curly hair, but she's not a poodle, right? So like, I think like, then we all just pictured the same dog. I still don't know what breed that is, but Riley was, uh, was awesome. She like, was like the biggest like diva. Like she was just like so fun to be around because it was like being around like a person almost. Like it was so weird. She didn't bark. She just made this weird, it sounded like she was gargling nails. Like it was like the most awful sound, but she was so fun to be around because she just like, she would just do whatever she wanted to. Like she, Riley was the one running that house. And, and so the first time that Mary uh, went over to house sit for this couple, um, all Riley knew was that her owners were gone and this strange college girl was just now in place of her owner, stole the house, stole her, stole everything. So Riley's like, I don't know who this person is. And so the, the first couple of times that Mary was there, you know, the owner told her like, hey, Riley's great. She'll listen. Like you don't have to put her on a leash when you go outside. Like she'll listen to you and, and follow you around. And Mary was like, all right, great. So Mary goes out one night to, to let Riley out. Out, and she's expecting, you know, to, to not have to put her on a leash that Riley's going to listen. And Riley had other plans. And so Mary went outside of the front yard, let Riley out. Riley's just kind of doing her thing. And, and so Mary's kind of sitting there and just kind of killing time. And as the, the, the neighbors had just ordered a pizza at about the same time. And so as Mary's outside with Riley, the pizza guy shows up for the neighbors. And so as, as Mary and Riley are outside, the pizza guy comes up, you know, knocks on the door and Riley's just kind of minding her own business. And then as soon as the door opens and Riley hears the neighbors start talking, Riley just like turned and like locked in on this open front door. And Mary could see the wheels turning in Riley's brain. And Mary was just like, Riley? And Riley didn't hear anything. Riley was like, I don't know you. You're a stranger. You kidnapped me. I don't care what happens to you. Like, I, like I'm a victim here. And so Riley's like, like got a bit, just like, be, like locked in on this open door. And Mary's like, Riley? And so in, and I'm picturing in Riley's brain, she's like, this life is terrible. There's now a stranger that's kidnapped me. She lives in Bentwater in a like several hundred thousand dollar house. And Riley's like, I got to get out of here. Like, this is the worst day ever. And so the door opens, the, the neighbor starts talking and then Riley takes off. And so she's got her like little like two inch legs just like coasting through this grass and bent water. She gets to the neighbor's house and Mary's freaking out now. And she's like, Riley, Riley. And Riley's like, I don't know you. I don't have to listen to you. And so Riley just keeps going. The pizza guy's just standing there trying to do his job holding a pizza. And then a dog just goes right between his legs into these people's house. And there's all these people freaking out. And he's probably like, what is happening right now? And then the mom that's had the door open is like, did something, just, did you see a white blur just like run into my house? And then as Mary's running up and trying to get Riley back and Riley 
Riley's making her great escape. Riley's running through the house and Mary just hears someone in the house go, who is this? And there's, a, there's now a strange dog just running around in their house. And eventually they, they caught Riley and gave, him back to, or gave her back to Mary. And so Mary's like, oh, thank you. And having to walk back to the house, like, what are you doing? Like, this is so embarrassing. And she's like trying to get Riley back. And, and the whole time Riley's probably like, I have no idea who you are. If you, you get somebody to do anything and I won't do any of it because I don't know you. I don't know who you are. And so for, for us, what we're gonna look at this morning is how we are all designed to go, but if we're following the wrong voices or if we don't know the voice of the one who has actually called us to go, we're gonna end up in places that we shouldn't have been in in the first place. That we're gonna be like Riley, this little dog, just like in this stranger's living room. And it's like, she doesn't know these strangers. Like now she's the one breaking and entering, not Mary. Like now Riley's like busted into this family's life. And so we're gonna end up in these places that we shouldn't be. But if we're following the one who has called us, for following the voice of the one who has created us, who has designed you to go, who has designed you to hope, who's designed you to have joy. If we're following the one that has created us and we know what his voice sounds like, you're gonna end up in the best possible place that you could be. Because you're in the place that the one who created you wants you to be. You're gonna be in the place where your creator is. You're gonna be in the place where Jesus is, where Jesus is right by your side in the middle of everything that you're going through because you've said yes to following him and you've chosen to go where he has called you. And so the only thing that we need to ask ourselves this morning is where are we headed? Are we headed somewhere like Riley, just where, where we wanna go and where we wanna be and kind of doing our own thing? Or are we headed somewhere that God has called us to? That's a, a better future than any of us could plan for ourselves and better than anything that we could imagine. Where are we headed? And so as we end this series, we're gonna finish up in uh, 1 Peter, uh, the, the, uh, the letter that uh, the apostle Peter wrote to this church that if you're following along in your Bibles, and this will be on the screens as well, but we've been going through this letter through this whole series and looking at these encouragements that Peter has for this particular church that's been going through some persecution and has been dealing with things outside of their control and situations that they're trying to figure out how to get through it without being persecuted or, or, or worse. And, and so Peter is writing to them, trying to remind them of who God is. And he's trying to remind them of what they've been designed to do and what they were designed for. So what we're gonna look at today is the end of this letter. And it's, there, there's some things that this little passage that we're gonna read might sound like a bunch of random kind of thoughts as Peter is closing this out, but, but Peter's trying to, to encourage this, this group of people in this church because they can't just call Peter later on and be like, hey, what was that thing that you said about like if we started to get fearful? Like they just had to wait for another letter. And so Peter's trying to remind them and leave them with these things that they needed to know to follow Jesus and to be the church and to see what they were actually designed to do. And so we're gonna be in 1 Peter chapter five and uh, we're gonna start off in verse six. I'm just read this, this quick little section of what Peter's encouraging uh, this group with. And he says, starting in verse six, humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. All right, and so what, what I love about this is that Peter's just trying to remind this church that he's like, regardless of what's happening, regardless of the situation, you have been designed to go. That, that he's like, God still has a mission for that particular church. That, that God still had a mission for this group of people because they were all designed to go. And so I love that the, the, one of the things that he says in this is that this church and for us as well reading this can cast all of our anxieties on Jesus because he cares for us. That, that other than no other reason than the fact that God cares for us, we now have someone who, who hears our worries, that hears our anxieties, that, that knows the things that we're dealing with and is with us through it and sees everything through to the end because he's faithful that Peter's trying to remind this church this because all these things are coming up and, and they're, they're nervous and they're anxious and they're worried about what's gonna happen. And Peter's not trying to tell them like, hey, don't think about your situation. Just like, just have blind faith, just do whatever, just follow blindly. Like Peter's not telling them to do that at all. But what he is trying to remind them is regardless of what their situation is, God is greater than whatever it is that they are, they are facing. That God is greater than whatever it is they can see happening just in their own lives. And so I think Peter also realizes too that when we get fearful or when we get uncertain, it can be easy to get stuck, right? The exact opposite of us going and doing what God has called us to is to be stuck and sitting just in one place. 
right? That, that, that there's, there's something in us that I think like we get anxious if we're uncertain. And so we kind of get in this place where, where we kind of just get stuck in, in one thing. And, and I don't know if you're like me, but if I, I like having a plan for everything, I want like every step, I want to know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. I want all of it. And so when I don't have that, I can get kind of what's, what you might experience as well. That's um, paralysis by analysis, Right, we, we spend so much time thinking through like all these different contingencies that may never happen. And it's like, well, man, I was gonna go do this thing, but like, what if there's like a hurricane? It's like, we're in Georgia, I think you're fine. Like, there's like, we can like plan for so many contingencies that, that don't even happen, that aren't even gonna be a thing that we get to the point where we have plans for everything and we haven't even taken a step. That we have plans for all this stuff that could happen and we haven't even taken a step of faith to even see if anything was gonna happen like that to begin with. Right, and I, I, the way that I think about it is, is um, the, the, kind of having this, what, what I think of as uh, trophy case faith, right? Like I've got a, a baseball that it just stays in my parents' house that I've had since I was like 11 years old that I got from a Braves game when they played at Turner Field where Atlanta baseball should be played and should still be played today, but that's a whole other thing. But we, we had tickets right behind the dugout. So I'm like 11 years old. My mind is like blown. Like I've never been this close to athletes that I'm like, they could bench press a house. Like I like, I just like, just I, my mind was blown that the whole thing. And at some point during the game, the, a player hit a foul ball and my dad grabbed it because I wasn't paying attention at all. I was in my own little world. I was like 11. And so my dad grabbed it and got the ball. And I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever owned in my entire life. And it, it kind of still is. And so I was like, man, I'm so pumped about this thing. So I put it on a shelf and it sat there for the last uh, 20 years. Like I've never used it. I've never gone to play baseball. I'm like, oh, let me grab that ball I got from Turner Field that one time and use that. Like it sits on a shelf on a little stand because I'm not gonna actually use it. And so the issue for us is that we can get to a place where we get stuck or we stop trusting that God cares for us. So we stop trusting that we can cast our worries on him. And we get to this place where we're, we're stuck and we have this kind of trophy case faith. But we're like, well, yeah, no, I, I believe in Jesus. Or like, yeah, like I, I went to church today or, or yeah, I checked off my devotional for this morning, but, but we don't, we're not actually using it. So we have kind of this trophy case faith where we can say like, yeah, like, I, like I, I have gone to church, I've done the thing, I've checked the box. And so it's just kind of there. But God wants so much more for you than a trophy case faith. God wants so much more for you than a faith that sits on a shelf that we can just say like, yeah, that's kind of there. Like I experienced that one time and that was cool. God wants, to, God wants us to experience a faith that is active and that is moving and where we get to see him move in the lives of the people around us because he's trusted you and given you more than you could ever imagine. That there is something God has done in you that he wants to do in the people around you and he wants to use you to be a part of what that is. That he wants to use you to be a part of that. And there's a reason that we call it following Jesus that we actually have to be going somewhere for us to be following anybody, that we can't follow Jesus but just stay in one place. But because Jesus is on the move, and if we aren't on the move and our faith isn't on the move, then somewhere we've missed the mark, right? But the good news is that God is always there with us. God hasn't moved so far ahead of you that he's just gone and it's just like, well, they had their chance and I'm leaving them behind, that God is always present and is always there with you, that it just takes that one step of obedience to get back in that place to be where you were designed to go. And so whatever that looks like for you, that could be a bunch of different things. And, and for, for Mary and myself, that means that in a little over a week, we're gonna be flying to Alaska and that's gonna be where we live. And so uh, for, for us, we had to use these, these different tools to try to make sure that we were hearing what God was saying correctly and that we were following what God had asked us to do um, correctly. And there's uh, some things that I wanna just leave um, with you guys this morning that We've learned from Pastor Van and from mentors and people that have been in our life that, that we were, you know, I grew up in Metro Atlanta. Like I've always lived, I've moved like from one county to the next and that's it. Like that's the biggest move I've ever made. Uh, Mary spent most of her life um, here in Metro Atlanta. And so we were really trying to figure out like, okay, how do we know that this is where God has called us and what we should be doing? And so the, the three main things that we use to try to figure this out are God's spirit, the Bible, and community. All right, the spirit, the Bible, and community. And, and it, it might seem simple, but it's because it works. It's because that that's how God speaks to us. That's because that's how God works and how God wants to, to reach us and communicate these things to us. And so uh, for us, it started off, like Pastor Van said, just with a conversation in, back in 2019 where um, we were uh, eating tacos at this random place in Lenox Mall, which is probably the most random like, sentence I could ever say. And we were sitting there eating dinner. And uh, the last service, I said that I said Alaska. And then Mary's feedback for me after that service was that she said Alaska. So who knows? She's probably right, but I'm the one with the microphone, so it doesn't really matter. But, um, 
But we were sitting there eating, and so we were, we're talking through, like, man, where, where could we go? And, and we were thinking less about a destination and more of just what we wanted to see the church help with, what we wanted to see the church step into and, and, and see people set free from. And so instead of us just thinking about, like, man, let's go to Hawaii and plan a church. And it's like, sounds great to me. Like, we were trying to think of, like, where that place could be. So we talked about things like, like people experiencing homelessness and seeing the church help with that or seeing churches help with, um, with, with like, marital and relational issues and, and, and potentially even domestic abuse or, or seeing the church help with mental health issues and, and drug and alcohol addiction and, and really seeing these things that, that people deal with on a daily basis and wanting to see the church step in and provide hope where, where Jesus, we believe, is the one that heals and sets people free and, and is moving and all of those things. And so, of course, with all those issues, they're all kind of, kind of broad that any city that you go to, you could experience those things. And then at that point, either Mary or myself, we'll just say we said at the same time, we both went, what if we went to Alaska? And so, uh, so we, we mentioned it kind of as a joke. And then we were like, oh, yeah, that'd be crazy. And we can like share the gospel with polar bears or something. I don't know. I don't know what's in Alaska. Like, like Pastor Van said, I had just watched Alaska State Troopers. I'd only been west of the Mississippi one time other than that. Like, I don't know what's in Alaska. And so, so we talked about that and we kind of joked around about it of like, oh, yeah, and then I can wear like a big like bear hide like suit or something. I don't know. Like, I don't know what that looks like. And so we joked around about it. And then over the next few days and then the next couple of weeks, it was like, for, for us, it was like, man, this is, we think this is God's spirit. The, the first thing that we're talking about really uh, giving us a place in mind, really giving us a destination because it was something that we, for us, we felt like we just couldn't forget about Alaska. That every time we thought about another country or another state or another city, nothing made sense. And it was like, I forgot all geography. I don't know a lot of it as it is, but the little bit that I knew, I was like, I forgot every city I've ever thought of or the, every place I've ever been to. And all we could think about was Alaska, this place that we had never even been before. And so through that process, we felt like that was God's spirit telling us like, hey, maybe this is something that you should look at. So we were like, Okay, we'll just see, we'll see what happens. So we, me and, and Mary just continue to pray over those next couple of weeks of, of, is this it? Like, did we hear you right? Or did those tacos have like a little bit too much sauce on them or like what was going on? And, and so we, as through our, our praying and through us trying to, to uh, encounter God's spirit in that we felt like Alaska was the place that he said to go. And so then fast forward a couple of years and, and we were you know, still on, going through this process and, and figuring out what that, what that thing would be. And then we had planned a vision trip to Alaska. So we planned this whole trip to go meet with people and to pray over the city and, and just to see it one time because we had never been there before. And, and so through this process, we were planning and, and you know, a lot of our big decisions happen over meals, I learned as I was kind of getting, like thinking through this whole, this whole process that we've been on. And so we were at breakfast one day, so we went from tacos to pancakes. And so we were, we're at breakfast one morning and we're talking through our vision trip and talking through like, man, how, does, um, how do we know that Alaska is the place? Like, how do you know that? So we're talking and Mary's like, you know, is that like, how do we know that even if we're there in person, how do we know that that is where God has asked us to be? Is that like, like the heavens opened up and it's like, yep, you're here. This is right. You guessed right. Like, what is, what does that look like? And as Mary was talking, somebody, another customer walked by our table and, and their, their shirt caught my attention because of what was on it. And so from Mary's point of view, she asked me this question and I'm just not paying attention at all, which probably happens more than I think it does. But um, so I'm like barely paying attention and Mary's like, hey, I asked you kind of a big question here. Like this is like the, the rest of our lives we're talking about. Like this is a big move. How do we know it's Alaska? And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's great. Did you see that person's shirt? And she was like, what is wrong with you? I'm asking you a serious question. I'm like, yeah, I know. Did you see that person's shirt? And she was like, well, no, I didn't see him. And right when Mary asked if Alaska, or how we would know if Alaska was the place that we should go, a random customer walked by our table wearing a shirt that was just a straight up Alaska state flag. And I was like, that's weird. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm not gonna move 4,000 miles away because the cleanest shirt this person had that day was an Alaska State flag shirt, but that's still a very weird thing to happen right at that moment. And, and for Mary and I, you know, we weren't um, asking God for, for a sign to go do something. Like, I think that there could be issues and we start asking God like, hey, give me a sign and then I'll go do this thing. Because God's like, I've already asked you to go do the thing. Like he, he doesn't owe that to us. To, for us to put him in a position to have to give us a sign, it was a great thing to see 1 Peter 5 come to life in that moment where we had to go back to scripture and say like, okay, is this, like, is this biblical for us to do this? And then we read 1 Peter 5, 7 where Peter says, cast your anxieties on him because he cares for you. That, that God doesn't owe us a sign, but God will be there when we are anxious and when we're nervous and when we don't know where we're headed or we don't know the next step, God will show up. 
God doesn't just leave you hanging and God doesn't just wanna keep you guessing. God will show up in the midst of that. And so for Mary and I, as we're sitting there thinking like, okay, we've spent a lot of money on plane tickets and Airbnbs and rental cars. And like, I don't even know if I can spell Alaska. Like, where are we, what, how do we know that this is the place? And then God just sent just that gentle reminder of he's like, hey, I've, I've already told you this. You guys have been planning. You guys have been praying. You, I've told you this is where to go. So here's just a reminder that I am here in the midst of this with you that we had God's spirit uh, stirring and giving us the, the even the, the destination to go. We had scripture to go back to, to see, man, we actually can cast our anxieties on Jesus because he does care and he is there present with us. And then the last thing that we used was community. That that was a huge piece that, that some of you in this room have been a part of this journey um, with us since 2019. And, and some of you have, have kind of come in in the midst of that on the, the way to us, us moving. And some of you had no idea who I was before I got up here. And so all of that is, is great. But there are people that were either we had known for a long time or people we had never even met before that were a huge part of us seeing where it was that God was calling us to go. And one, one guy in particular that when we uh, got to our vision trip in Alaska, we were there for, for a week to, like I said, meet with people and get to kind of tour the city and pray over different things. And so that very first morning that we're there, had been there for 12 hours, had gotten off a plane the night before, we're sitting at breakfast because again, we, all of our big things happen over meals. And, and so we're sitting there at breakfast and talking to our waiter and, and he asked where we were from and we said Atlanta and he said, oh, I'm from Atlanta. I live in Grant Park near Georgia Tech. And we were like, we live in the suburbs. And he was like, no, and kind of disappointed and walked off and we were like, yeah, us too. I don't know. Like, and so, um, so we we're talking to him and just kind of seeing, um, trying to learn about the city and learn about his perspective. And, and through uh, the conversation, it, it kind of seemed like he maybe wasn't a follower of Jesus. And so we were just trying to figure out like, what was, what was the city like? Like, what was, are there any churches that you even know of? Like, what does this look like? And as we were talking and, and told him that we were up there to potentially try to start a church or just figure out what that was, um, he was like, oh, that's cool. And, and, you know, kind of, you know, walked away, did some of his other stuff that he was doing. But then he came back to our table just a few seconds later and he was like hey this might sound kind of weird but I feel like I had like some kind of like mental image of of you guys like helping uh in the the downtown Anchorage area of just like helping people who are experiencing homelessness I don't know and then just walked off and we were sitting there like what just happened like like he had no reason to know that like that was one of the, the, the things that we were concerned about, one of the things we wanted to, to be a part of and help with that he had no reason to know any of that. So we're sitting there with like pancakes and reindeer sausage and we're trying to figure out where we even are. And this guy's over here like prophesying stuff. And I'm like, I don't even think that you know you just prophesied over somebody. Like, I don't know, what does that even mean? And so, so there were so many things like that. The guy used, like I said, people that we didn't even know. He used our, our small group that we were involved in. He used our friends and our family to just all like, all throughout this process to remind us of what he had called us to, right? To, to help us in that, that beginning initial moment of, of knowing that we were maybe on the right track and in the year since then of us figuring out what it would look like for, for uh, me getting a job at ACF Church, for us find, getting a place to live like two weeks ago, thank God. Like it just like all these little things that we had community around us reminding us like, hey, God's done all these things before that the things that we would forget or things that we would look over, they were reminding us that God's been there the whole time. And so the, the great thing about this too is for all of us, even though that we're all designed to go, um, sometimes going doesn't mean leaving somewhere, right? That, that for all of us, like the good news is some of y'all are like, I'm not moving to Alaska. Um, like they're, they're like, they've got bears, they've got moose, it snows, it's dark all the time. I don't wanna live there. And I'm like, I get it. Like I, like I understand where you're coming from. And so the great thing is for all of us in here, you don't have to like move to a completely different state. You don't have to move to another part of the world. You don't have to do anything like that because being designed to go just means that we are designed to say yes to where God is calling us. And so for some of you, that may be that you move all the way across the world. That don't, be, don't tell God like, well, Cody said I didn't have to go anywhere. If God says it, that go, or that's between you and him. But if, if you're in this place where you're like, man, I don't know what that looks like, going may be across the world or going may just be across the street. Right, going maybe going to another country where you are doing something incredible and doing uh, like something that seems like this really huge kind of thing, or it may mean going across the street and doing something that seems small that God is using to make an impact in somebody's life. But it could be something that you're like, man, I don't, I feel like this isn't like this big thing. Like, I don't like, is this even worthy to put on Instagram or like whatever it is? And it's like, no, you, if you're following Jesus, whatever it is that you were doing is a big thing because the God that created the universe created you a certain way, designed you a certain way and put you in that position to do something that he wants to do through you, that, that he, he, he could do whatever he wants. But that's been the humbling thing for Mary and I through this whole process is God can do whatever he wants to do. But for some reason, he has asked us and chosen us to go be a part of what he's already doing in Alaska. 
that, that we don't have to go start something. We don't have to go like introduce this whole idea that God is already on the move all over the globe. And so we don't have to do anything other than just say yes and go partner with God. And for us, that just happens to be a different state. But for you, that could be partnering with God in your own neighborhood and just with the, the people that live around you. It could be uh, partnering with God just in going to your family and people that, that maybe you feel um, nervous about sharing your faith with or even talking to about God and God is calling you to go to share the hope of the gospel with them in that. Uh, maybe you're, you're a student and that's going um, just into your school and going to where there's, there's maybe people that you see in the cafeteria at lunch that are by themselves or people in your class that you know need some encouragement or need to know that, that there is a God and there is someone who loves them and cares about them. That going doesn't always mean leaving, but going does mean that when God says to go somewhere, when God says to take a step, that we trust him and we take that step. And the thing that I love about this is that we also don't have to act like Riley, the dog that we talked about, that, that didn't know Mary's voice, that didn't know where she was going and just went wherever she felt like. That there's actually so much encouragement in, in scripture where we get to see that Jesus actually wants to speak to us and wants to move. And one of the, the things that I love and one of the things that, that I always come back to in this is that in John chapter 10, when it talks about knowing Jesus's voice, this is what it says. It says, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he, was brought, or when he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. And so this morning, I just want you to know that God wants you to know his voice. God wants you to know that he is for you that you were designed for something greater, but there is something that Jesus has for you that you could never plan on your own. And, and if you're just trying to, to control everything and you've got this, this idea of what your life should look like and that is the, the ideal for you, I promise whatever God has for you is far greater than that thing. Because whatever God has for you is gonna be what you were actually designed to do. It's gonna be what God put in you to do. It's gonna be what the, the God that created you wants to see you accomplish in this life. And it's gonna be far more fulfilling than anything else you could ever imagine. And just as I'm I even thinking about this message and thinking about our move, I think about like why we even do this. Like why do we even trust God with that? Why do we even follow Jesus in that? And I think about the story from uh, when I was in college, the, the church that I was going to, the pastor talked about uh, one time that he had a mentor who was, was getting older and wasn't in um, great health. And so he went to go visit him in the hospital. And as he's talking to this mentor, this is a guy that had been following Jesus for, for decades, that had been a pastor and had worked at churches and had done all kinds of things. And so the, the pastor wanted to know from his mentor, like what was the biggest thing you've learned about God through all of these years of following Jesus, all these years of seeing God do different stuff and seeing different things happen, what is the biggest thing that you learned? And the, his mentor thought about it for a second and he just said, I just learned that God really loves us. And so as a college student, you know, sitting there listening to this, hearing this for the first time, waiting for this answer of like, man, what is this mentor's answer gonna be? Like, what's the biggest thing you learned about God? And then hearing him say, God really loves us. My honest first thought was, that's it? Like, I was like, that's, that, there's like, yeah, I know that, but like, what else is there? Like, there's gotta be like more if you've been following Jesus for that long. And then I felt kind of bad that I thought that because I was like, oh man, did anybody else think that in here? Until the pastor said that as he sat there and heard his mentor say that, he, he told his mentor, is that it? And I was like, okay, I'm not the only one that thought that in this room. But as he talked to his mentor, the mentor was like, yeah, like God really loves us. Did that every decision he had made, everything that he did came down to the fact that God really loved him. And so I can say that being that college student and sitting in that place of only following Jesus for a year or two, um, that I was like, yeah, I, I mean, I hear Jesus loves me all the time. I heard it before I was a Christian. I, I heard it when I didn't care about it. I heard it now that I do get it and care about it, but I thought that there was gonna be more. And so I went from this place of being like, man, is that really it? That, like, that, that's, that's what you're gonna learn after all these years to then being in a place now of seeing God's faithfulness to, to me and Mary just in this whole process of trying to move to Alaska, uh, of seeing his faithfulness just being here, like I said, as a part-time middle school director when I was at KSU and had no idea what I was doing and, and seeing God move in mine and Mary's life as, as staff members here, as, as a couple, as just followers of Jesus along with you guys, that now when I hear somebody say like, man, one thing that I've learned is that God really loves me. My answer to that now can be like, that's it. Like that's the whole thing. That's the reason that we do any of this. That's the reason that we follow Jesus. That's the reason that we do anything is just because God really loves us. And he's designed us to go because there are people that don't know that. There are people that don't know that there's a God that loves them and cares for them, that they can cast all of their anxieties on because there's a God that cares for them. 
And so you were designed to go, not for the sake of where you're going, but for the sake of, of following Jesus to go spread hope to people who need it, to see God move in that way. And so the only question for us now this morning is where are we going? And so as we close out this morning, I want you to just bow your heads with me and close your eyes as we pray and as we ask God to move here in this place. And so Jesus, we thank you for who you are. God, we thank you that, that you are here with us. God, that we don't have to guess where to go, God, because you want to go before us. God, that you want to be the one moving. God, that you are the one that, that sets these things up um, for us in our lives. That Jesus, we don't have to control anything. We don't have to, to know all the details. God, we just need to take that next step in saying yes to you and who you are. And so Jesus, we pray this morning that wherever we are headed is where you already are. God, that we're not going by ourselves, that we're not going on our own, but Jesus, we are trusting you in the midst of whatever it is that you have called us to. And so God, we trust you with that as we look to that next step you've asked us to take to the next thing that we get to see you do. And God, we just worship and praise you here in this place this morning because of that. And so God, we love you, we thank you. It's in your name we pray, amen.